Yeah. <laughs> stare there. This is uh, Leo Cortez. He is um, kind of one of the two guys doing the uh, This Is Not A Drill podcast. So we kind of had a, uh, a goofy start this morning. We thought we were doing a podcast. I thought I was doing a podcast on his show. He thought he was doing a podcast on my show. So we're just doing a Facebook Live because that's more fun anyways, right? Get a, the whole visual thing going on. So uh, Leo's kind of, uh, and the, the idea, I guess, behind all this is Leo's, um, you know, a very active physical, spiritual seeker type, and um, Dang. <laughs> uh, he's, he's uh, of the mindset that the uh, meat is necessary for human growth and evolution and all these things, and of course, those of you uh, who know me uh, know I'm more plant-based. So we just wanted to kind of just have this discussion and, and talk about it. And um, of course, if anybody wants to chime in at any point now, or if you're watching this later on. Yeah, uh, should I share this? Uh, well, it's uh, in the uh, in my private group. So oh, okay. And, yeah, you can always invite people to that. Yeah. Um, so, um, I don't know, Leo, give me a little bit about your background. Like, uh, why do you do what you do? Yeah, so like... Um, you know, when I was 17, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder mm -hmm. and it was by diagnosis of exclusion, which means they couldn't say what it was. So because it wasn't everything else, then it was this one thing mm -hmm. that they call Bichette's disease okay. or Bichette's syndrome, uh, whatever, uh, and it's just basically the inflammation of the small blood vessels in your body. So that goes everything from like my eye, how it manifests. I always had like crazy stomach aches when I was a kid. I would get like, um, like uh, floaters in my eyes as a kid mm -hmm. and canker sores. I used to get those all the time. Mm -hmm. And But problem is my dentist isn't talking to my optometrist, isn't talking to my gastroenterologist mm -hmm. so they didn't know there's a systemic thing going on mm -hmm. because they're isolated mm -hmm. welcome to western medicine and so eventually they hadn't you know i woke up one morning looked like there was a fog in my room mm -hmm. and i like you know that's one of the scariest things you like rub your eyes and then like but the the fog's still there but you know it's not in the actual air mm -hmm. So, drove to school that day looking at the yellow line in the road. X. Bad idea. Yeah. Definitely got picked up and driven home. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but, you know, after like a cup, like a year or, or two of taking anti-inflammatory steroidal drugs that you're only supposed to take for like a couple weeks, tops, mm -hmm. they had me on those for years. X. I still got stretch marks and stuff from like how it just fucks with your skin. Mm -hmm. And... um yeah, I just kind of like found myself getting three hour transfusions of some off label drug sitting next to 60 year olds. I'm 19. Mm -hmm. I'm like, something's wrong here. They're telling me I have to do this for the rest of my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I cannot do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I just started getting, you know, I was thinking, well, at the very least, I could help my body process all this toxic stuff they're putting in me to deal with this. Mm -hmm. So stop adding to the stress. And I'm like, start looking into how I'm eating. Maybe I can do a little bit this, that. Eventually, got into, found paleo. Okay. And when I got into paleo, I saw a bunch of my symptoms reduce. Like so much that like in my doctor that I wanted to get off of them, off of these like drugs. Mm -hmm. But my doctor was nervous because he doesn't know why this is happening. Mm -hmm. And so if like I just go off the medicine, what if it comes back again? What if I go blind? At one point my optic nerve was inflamed. They thought like it could be super serious. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, and when I found keto, which is like high fat, low carb, mm -hmm. everything just solved itself pretty much. And what was the problem after that was just like dealing with the fact that like that was so healing and I saw, I felt a visceral response to the inflammation mm -hmm. yet cravings. How do you, how do you, what's going on in that world, you know, and how do you understand all that? Right. 
So eventually, you know, doing research, looking into everything from like, because I'm also fascinated by like shamanism, and sure, altered states of consciousness and things. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed the different kind of consciousness I was in when I was eating that way and when I wasn't. Okay. And about like the kind of mental clarity I would have and how much like. Like, uh, before we go too much further, what yeah. was your diet like when you were a kid? You know, as uh, a kid yeah, and a I mean, so the big thing was like my env home environment was stressful, it was incredibly stressful. So then I was also self medicating unconsciously with sugar, mm -hmm. but I didn't know because I was a kid. Yeah. But I was also like, when I go some, when I leave the stress and I'm hanging out having fun, I'm also like fucking pounding sugar. Mm -hmm. monster energy drinks, Fritos and Twizzlers and whatnot. And it was just like, you know, feeling that freedom. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously that was doing some damage, right. you know, and that with the stress. And that's why the cravings are so key because it's like, touches you into like a primal part of yourself. So you're like, you're, you're like, my body was trying to like take care of me given the resources it had. Mm -hmm. It's like, and this dude needs dopamine. This is a high cortisol environment. Like, mm -hmm. let's, get some sugar in here or whatever. That's all I knew, mm -hmm. you know? And as I found fitness, that helped a little. When I found paleo, that helped. And I think the thing with paleo is just, like, all the additives are gone. So I think the, like, autoimmune stuff, I'm always, like, at the very least, stop eating that stuff that doesn't, like, has never been eaten before. Doesn't classify as food. Yeah, I'm, like, most of the food products. I, yeah, I call them food-like <laughs> drugs. Yeah. Because they're like very addictive and mm -hmm. they're because of their hyper concentration. Right. But then at the same time, there's no nutrients there. So it's not really people, food. I always tell people uh, addictive foods are never nourishing and nourishing foods are never addicting. Yeah. And then that's, you know, ultimately that's what led me down to carnivore. It's like I found that in, in I, I, the way I look at it is there's a spectrum of like, mm -hmm. The most processed carbohydrate based diet and like the least processed wild diet mm -hmm. and um and I just find that like if I'm getting inflammation I just bring it back to this side everything falls away mm -hmm. and then that's the game because you can't live there nobody's trying nobody's trying to live there like right. it's just like what I don't know, you're also living in the most like advanced time in human technology. You're just you're never gonna have a Twizzler, you're never gonna have ice cream. It's like, yes you are. You're gonna hate yourself afterwards if you make that rule for yourself. Right. Or nicey. Right, nicey. Sometimes you gotta get two nicey treats and <laughs> <laughs> and have yourself a good night. But my cravings this morning, like I don't usually eat in the morning, but this morning after eating like that, right. so hungry. It's mm -hmm. like like it's annoying being that hungry when you're not used to being that hungry. Mm hmm can't do this yeah the sugar just robs all the nutrients out of the body and then you're like nutritionally starving right so yeah and i was just like you know what we're gonna lean into this i'm gonna take an ice bath <laughs> and force my body to figure it out so you've you went from sugar and fritos to um you know going through all these drugs and steroids and everything yeah and you found your way to paleo and exercise and all this stuff yeah and and so now you're you're symptom free is that is that what the yeah. result is yeah for sure i mean if i go off the rails or if I, life gets real stressful and i revert back to like old patterns of comfort mm -hmm. eventually i have to my body forces me to leave there because if i stay there I'll start to get the symptoms again, and I already mm -hmm. know how to solve it. So mm -hmm. it's like, you can only do that so long. Mm -hmm. It's like a gift. It's like a little blessing that I get to have. And it's like, um, well, I could have fought it my whole life. Right. <laughs> or I could learn how to make it a gift, you know? Right. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's good that at least you found a path before you went through all the surgeries or, you know, Freaks me out. cancers or all the possible, you know, things. For sure. I have friends that are like, have a 17-year-old brother 18 year old brother who got his gallbladder removed mm -hmm. i'm like are you sure like he eats a lot of weird shit like you don't think we could at least try at least try cutting back first before we start like cutting things out of mm -hmm. their body mm -hmm. so crazy but at the same time when i had all these inflammation things as a kid and nobody knew so i got braces mm -hmm. my mouth my gums inflamed mm -hmm. you know what the doctor's solution was 
Uh, probably an antibiotic. No, cut the gums off. What? Yes. Welcome to Western medicine. This is advanced technology. They were like, let's put him down and cut his gums back because they're too inflamed. It's like, yo, y'all are idiots. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I can't trust them. And it bums me out sometimes because like, sometimes you get sick and you don't have another answer. You're like, I got to take some weird shit because it's like, I'm not going to die about this. Right. I'm not going to make this like super permanent, but it's like, I'm also not going to reach into that bucket unless I have no other options. Right. You know? Yeah, and I, um, I, I think it's funny. I, I just finished watching on uh, Netflix uh, the Pyramid Code. Have you oh, seen that? so sick! Yeah, and and they're talking. Yeah, you know, they keep saying, "Oh, you know, if as long as we think that we're the most advanced human civilization on the planet, we'll never be able to grow." You know, and looking back to the Egyptians, where they had these like healing centers where they were just using sound, right, and light, and like you know, electricity in the atmosphere and all this stuff. Exactly. And, you know, they had a full, complete understanding of the human body and all the different glands and everything. And here we are just cutting things out just to, you Dude, know, because we don't know what's wrong with it. Yeah, and like, I don't know, like, I'm mad now because when I go to the dentist, sometimes mm -hmm. I, I haven't been in a minute, but when I go to the dentist, they're like, uh, you know, like they, they say like, oh, you're doing good. But, you know, some some spots like you're brushing, you're brushing your gums too hard and you're brushing them away, like wrist they're receding there. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, y'all cut them out. Like, I'm not going to have this conversation every time, but you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, like that is a, such a, and it's like, meanwhile, all I had to do was stop eating the weird not food that comes right. in shiny packages. Now, what, so how much meat do you say you consume? I mean, I, it varies. It, I went to Fogo to Chow the other night. I don't know what that is. a Brazilian steakhouse downtown. Okay. They just come around with swords. And they, their swords like full of meat, and you got a green, you got a green coaster, red on the other side, and you just go green or red depending on if you're ready. Put green. They just come around with swords of meat, and they just keep cutting you chunks until you tap out. <laughs> but I had gone really hard uh, at the gym the day that earlier that day, and I'd fasted all day. Mm -hmm. So at night I was like, it's gains time, and I'm just gonna eat all this steak. And at the same time, I'm aware, I said, like something's wrong why this is how can they afford this this is mm -hmm. slave meat like mm -hmm. i'm not unaware and that's an unfortunate reality of the circumstance we got ourselves in because we thought it was the best idea was to grow a bunch of rows of corn and wheat and rice and then populate the planet as much as we could it's like why is that mm -hmm. just more of us that's the answer so you say answer. slave meat and and i i i, I, I heard you use that term one day and I, I thought that was a, a funny but you know accurate way you know and, and if people called it that maybe yeah. people would eat less of it but maybe they wouldn't you know? at least bring it into consciousness take responsibility for what we're doing right you know and I think at the same time it's like there's other kinds of slave food too I mean I think for, I think honestly wheat and corn are slave food like sure. that's that's what the peasants eat that's not what the kings were eating right you know what I mean the kings were eating the the wild caught boar mm -hmm. or the fish or whatever the thing was, but they were not eating the bread all this you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like they they knew there's something inherent where we knew where the nutrition was. Well eventually I think the kings eat that stuff now. For sure. <laughs> they're they're slipping. You, they're you sli see how things are run nowadays. I don't think they're the real kings. Well that's true too. I think they're pretending. The ceremonial kings. Yeah. Yeah. Their time has come. <laughs> true. I think I think the time has come. So now, I'm sure you've heard of you know acid alkaline, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how do you feel that this fits into paleo lifestyle? Well, more like chemical reactions, you know. Well, okay. So what I think is like you just got to know what your body's saying and what you're like tuning in to and like what you're tuning in for. And I think it's about balance. So, like, like you know, in traditional Chinese medicine, they're like, there's like the cold and the hot spectrum mm -hmm. of things, and there's like the interplay of those two. And I kind of think about it like that. Like, okay. like I think I can tell when I'm falling out of balance. Like, if I went really hard, I've been going really hard in the gym. First of all, I take cold showers pretty much every day. Okay. Pretty much only cold showers, except after workouts. And so, I'm always, like, cooling my system. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going really hard in the hot. 
So I just had to keep that balance. And I think with the same way with like the, the, the carnivore and fasting. And then like, so I go, I got carnivore, that's like full predator mode, you know, and sometimes I got to tune into that when I'm like stressed in life. You know, they talk about like Navy SEALs don't get the PTSD that the, that the other troops get because they're the ones on the attack. They're not waiting. So I think sometimes in life, it's not helpful to be eating prey food. You need to be eating predator food so that you can tune into predator consciousness and tackle this obstacle that's like daunting. But I think that you can't stay there. It's toxic. Mm -hmm. And so when I feel like I'm going real too deep in there, the opposite of that is like drug food, like pure food only for comfort. Mm -hmm. So I'll go there depending on how much I need to, you know, um, to keep it balanced. And then every now and then just reboot the system with fast. And I feel like I just play with those dynamics. Okay. And I can kind of feel where I need to be. So, I mean, do you feel like this is a long-term stain, sub, sustainable diet lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, I honestly, and it's taken a long time to get to this point. It's a lot of trial and error, a lot mm -hmm. of testing, a lot of like <clears throat> failure, you know. And frustration and depression, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just found I got to a point where I, I know what my body's saying. I understand okay. what it's asking from me. And sometimes it's a new trick. I mean, I'm always growing and learning. Mm -hmm. There's always, you know, every time I'm injured, every time I have some kind of thing pop up, it's, there's something I need to learn here. And then there's another pro learning process occurs. And through healing, then I have a new understanding of another dimension of my health. How old are you? 26. 26. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't hit the whole 30 wall of the body starts giving you <laughs> the the age related things, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but especially I, being a, you know, weightlifter and everything. I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to have some interesting just My, it'll be interesting to see how you develop, right? And, yeah, for and how sure. This comes along. Yeah, and I'm like there's a lot of things I want to get into that I've never gotten into and like who knows as time progresses my body asks for shifts in activities and things like that, you know. I'm not married to anyone. And you still you still uh you know, eat veggies and do things still, 100%, right? Like you're 100%. not straight carnivore. No, I don't I don't believe in that either. Like I my perfect day I probably I'm running off of a like 12 to 16 hour fast. Okay. And then I break the fast <clears throat> with my coffee, which is like this crazy, that's what I'm drinking now. Mm -hmm. It's got like four different kinds of mushrooms. It's got cacao, moringa, like I put everything in there with coconut oil and butter and I blend that together. The lipids give it a transport. Okay. And then I can't sip on that super fast. So we have some people watching. Hey Vicky, hi Jenny. What's up? Um, if you guys have questions about anything, please jump in, throw them up there. I'll try to pay attention. Um, okay. Do you ever do longer fasting? Yeah. So long as I've done is like 44 hours, but I, I have goals of, I mean, really life goals. We're talking, just hit it at least once. 40 day, 40 day fast would be nice. Okay. And like on some Jesus stuff. Yeah, you know. I did thirty-one days one time on insane on a juice fast. Crazy. Yeah, it's it'd be interesting. I've I've known people to go longer, like ninety yeah. days on juice fast, and I know two dudes that went water fast twenty-seven and twenty-eight days. Yeah, that's that's intense. But once you get to a certain point of the juice fasting, it's hard to even. I mean, you don't even really crave anymore it's mostly just water is all you want anyways so no it, it, hunger is a very interesting thing I, what yeah. I what I, I ask people all the time are you hungry here or are you hungry here uh, right uh, like what is it really like are you covering up emotions or you, what are you covering up problems what I love is like what like going having the spectrum I'll, I'll see when I go from eating deep processed drug like carbohydrate foods to fasting right afterwards mm-hmm and I can feel my body shift energy systems. Mm -hmm. I can feel my pancreas start working once the sugar runs out like mm -hmm. of my body and it's like things have to shift and I have to start pulling energy out of my own reserves and mm -hmm. my body's like, oh, so that easy stuff's done? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people reckon, they think that's hunger, that moment. But once 
that passes, mm-hmm. then like food becomes like kind of like this thing I can do that I don't have to do, but that I should do periodically to keep the system going. Right. You know. So I find that interesting because a lot of people, I think, on the <clears throat> paleo type diet or, or the people that are very meat focused don't yeah. do a lot of the fasting, which mm-hmm. is a very alkalizing process. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff you're consuming, your, your meat is typically very acidic, the sugars are very acidic, coffee is very acidic. So you, you're consuming mostly acid things. And you're still young, so it may not be impacting you yet, but that's why I say it should be interesting to see how this plays out because if you don't stay on top of it with lots of you know distilled water and things to flush out your kidneys, you know, will you end up with kidney stones? Will you end up with muscle cramps or mm. osteoporosis or heart disease or mm. cholesterol issues? There's a whole range of things that could happen, mm. right? Mm. And so this is why I focus more on, on plant-based because you have more fiber where, you know, meats and sugars don't have the fiber there to help push the things through the, the, the colon. Mm. Um, and then you have, you know, and I'm sure you're still eating salads and things, right? So, yeah, I eat greens all the time. Right. It's just like not, it's kind of like more like ornamentation, mm-hmm. nutritional ornamentation more than like nutritional like substrate. Right. So, I just. Uh... But yeah, no, it's interesting. I and and you know one of Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I don't know if you ever heard of her. I've heard the name. She know. she's like a molecular biologist. Um, she's got a podcast, Found My Fitness, where she like talks to like a bunch of like leading experts, and it's really cool because she's a, a molecular biologist. Mm-hmm. Like so, when you get experts talking on that level, like to just be a fly on the wall is like mm-hmm. is a so many things to google later and stuff right. but she was she, what she was talking about the red meat thing because people talk about like red meat and heart disease and it being related to igf and all those types of things and what, what they found in the studies was like it's red meat and sedentary that causes heart disease because something about that oh what she was saying was like as active as an active person if you're using that IGF to repair. Mm -hmm. It's not causing all that weird stuff that it does when people, and at the same time, a lot of those studies about red meat are people eating burgers with fries and things like that. And it's like, there's a lot of other stuff going on there that I way more mistrust the longevity of than, because like we were eating meat before we were even like, we didn't have fridges, you know what I mean? Well, but were we eating meat as frequently as we eat meat now, right? That's the other thing is I think it was more of a seasonal thing or it was as needed, right? You didn't go out and just slice a steak off the cow when you were hungry for dinner every day, right? You were maybe killing the cow because you didn't have other things to eat. You know, the produce wasn't available, the, the beets and the you know nuts and all these other things that weren't in season weren't readily there. Mm-hmm. And so you had to have something to get you through, right? Sure, and so I sure. think it's I tell people if you're going to do that, try to keep it seasonal, right? right? Yeah. And variety if, is. If you're an Inuit, key. you know, and you don't have a garden to pull from, then you're probably going to eat more meats. It's right. going to thicken up the blood. It's going to keep you warmer. It's going to work in your advantage. Facts. But if you live in Hawaii, right, you've got. Yo, that makes sense. Because it's like, if you think about, I, be, I do all these ice baths and cold stuff. Mm hmm. So, some, some Antarctic shit. It is. It's interesting. So, it is. So, and, and it's very much eating for your climate and eating for the seasons. So here we have the shifting of the seasons. I'm pretending I'm living in the lo- right. like all the time in and, the cold. And you're, you're constantly staying active to burn off those calories, right? Yeah. Whereas I eat pretty much strictly plant well. I am strictly plant-based, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I, I don't say I'm vegan because I, I occasionally wear leather and I eat honey and stuff, right? But right. Uh, It's tough. Uh, not really. Like, after a few years of doing it, I, I, I don't even, I don't crave bacon. I don't crave yeah. cheese. Yeah. None of that stuff. Those yeah. are drugs to me. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And, and che- I, Cheese, man. Eh. Some cheese is good, though. I, I you, disagree. You don't eat cheese at all? No, no. Not at all. Because it's, I mean, it's, so dairy, you know, especially cow dairy, yeah. 
has the highest amount of casein per any mammal, yeah. right? Human breast milk has the lowest amount of casein in any mammal. Yeah. So our receptor sites for those things are very few. Mm. And those are the opioid receptors because they get into a case of morphine in the body and then bonds to the opioid receptors. So you're actually giving the body a drug by feeding yourself cow dairy. I think everything's a drug. I don't. I mean, do you, you do you eat a salad and you're like, oh man, I just want another salad right now, you know? Like I, I gotta have a little eat. bit more. I, I'm so stuffed on salad, I can't eat anymore. It doesn't usually pan out that way. Like you just get to a point where you're like, oh, I'm satisfied, and then you go about yeah, your day and you what have energy. dressings are you putting on that salad? Just olive oil and uh, apple cider vinegar. You know, and 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 ultimately too, it's like, yeah, like sometimes I want that state of consciousness. Sometimes I don't, and and I don't, and I feel like whatever we're doing, we're tuning our states of consciousness based sure. on what we put in us. Sure, and this is part of my point, right? Like, so yeah. you're, you go out and and you exercise and you stay active, which is awesome. I definitely need more of that, right. but because I eat the way I do, I don't necessarily have to spend as much time being active because right. I'm not consuming as many dense calories. I'm eating more fiber and pure nutrients, right. okay. which are easier to digest. And they're not as taxing on the body, and they're alkaline. Maybe, but also, don't you think? Well, it's like that's fun for you. Well, but fun for me is going on a two-mile run, going to jujitsu, going to the gym, yeah. and maybe doing an ice bath the next day. Oh, and I, I've I've been in periods where I've I've exercised regularly, and I, I agree that's almost addicting, right? You get a total high off of that, yeah. and and you feel good. And you it's only got these rewarding. animal bodies for so long. True. But the other point is, and, and I know we kind of touched on this before, is, you know, I feel like I'm creating less death mm. by doing the plant-based diet, mm. right? I mean, you cannot avoid killing, right? It's just not possible. No. Probably and I tell people all the time that living foods give you life, dead foods bring you death, right? Living foods <clears throat> being your raw plant produce, right? The only way I see meat being alkaline or living is if you're eating like a lion you're just taking a bite right out of the animal right yeah you but then they kill it and they still eat it is it dead then but then it's not been cooked all those active enzymes and, and probiotics and all that stuff that's still in there is still active so it's still a living nutrient right so a lot of i'm animals, not opposed to eating i used to eat raw liver okay a lot of those animals that are eating things don't get their probiotics until they eat, say, like roadkill, right? Something that's set there and fermented, right? Your natural, you know, nature's beef jerky or whatever, right? Like savages. We got a long way to go to get back to that. Well, our guts aren't ready. I, I disagree, and I, I would say you go on some hyena life. <laughs> I would say I, I'm not going to do that just because I personally don't believe in processing my nutrients through another animal. Mm. I believe that I am worth the direct nutrients, right? From the sun. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> awesome. Have you looked into the sun gazing? I'd be looking at the sun. It feels good. Yeah. I mean, but have you like researched these people? There's an awesome movie called uh, uh, Eat the Sun. <laughs> and, and it's very, uh, you know, it, it kind of gives both sides of it, right? There's a guy that goes through it and doesn't eat for a long time and notices all the benefits and the, the mental clarity and spiritual evolution of it and everything. You think that's where you're getting your energy when you fast? I don't know. I think there's energy all around us. I know a guy who's a, uh, a breathitarian and has been for a few years. What's and, that mean? Uh, it's, it's sort of like sun gazing. Like he basically is just in a constant state of fasting, right? And so he pulls energy from breathing. Or if he gets tired, he goes for a run or listens to music or gets into a deep conversation or something. Right, so he's pulling Dude's energy like from everything. Sleepiest dude when he's not engaged, though. Like no, that. he's every time I've seen him. Really, the first time I met him, it was like five in the morning. Right, dark out. He can't just, sleep. No, uh. I mean, we we were just it was like a campfire kind of thing. We're all sitting up having a conversation. Everybody else has passed out. Oh, I mean, of course, he doesn't drink or smoke or do anything else either. He but do he nothing. Just, he, he's, he's just eternal. He's just, I, I guess. <laughs> But he's I'm and, not. and he just fathered a child. That's amazing, right? So he's creating life out of nowhere. We got to look into that guy. So it's it's completely possible because I've maybe. seen him. And I he feel says like he might, he's not lying when he's not around. He said occasionally he will have like maybe like a spoonful of like uh, coconut butter or something just as a treat, or he might have like a sip of water once in a while. Why is he Why is he so aggressive? Because he can. He just wants to. I mean. I guess it's I got, it would be fun to go into that fractal. That day that I, I, I spent um, 
well, once I got to that, like the end of that 30, 31 day fast, I had serious anxiety about eating again because I felt so good not eating. Right. And I knew that once I started eating again, it's, it's a slippery slope. It's back into the whirlwind. Yeah. Cause you're, you're back into the control scheme of the food market, right? Yeah, think the of whole how much, thing. Yeah. I mean, think whatever of how goes much, into that. yeah, I mean, you're working to buy food. You're working to shop for food. You're working so, to make food, clean up after food, right? It's, it takes up tons of your time and, and resources. And so if you can get away from that, what can you do? Right? Right. I mean, there's a lot of time for what you don't have the diseases, you don't have the constipation, you Mm. know, all the things that come along with either diet go away. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, I just feel like it's a spectrum. It's like, it helps. I mean, every person feels at home at different parts of the spectrum and like, we just got to get to know ourselves. Like different people at different times are going to have different requirements. They're going to need different levels of insights and experience depending on where they're at. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't know. It really seems like you'll figure it out. Like if you want to figure it out, you'll figure it out. It'll take some time. And it just takes practice, right? right? Like you're practicing one method. I'm practicing another. And you're finding what, and you're just trusting your intuition to lead you to where do you need to go? You're willing to do the work and the research and the, and the attention paying to, to learn. But I think, as we see with, uh, I know you're into the whole Wim Hof thing, right? Uh, yeah. the, the Wim Hof breathing method. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if people can do that, then why can't we pull energy from the sun, right? Like, why can't they we go without too. food? I want to do it all. I, why not? That's right? what I'm saying, yeah. This is I mean, ride. that is the evolution, I think, is learning how to do these things comfortably, right? And and I think a lot of the the, the hesitation for people is just the pushback from society. Right? We're yeah. such social creatures anymore. You talk to anybody that's changing their diet, that's usually one of the biggest concerns is like, well, how do I go out and eat this with my friends? How do yeah. I go do this with my friends? My you got to go full think renegade. Weird. If you're going to do it, you got to do it. I tell people, you got to be the leader in your group. Yeah. You know? I was the weirdo. I still kind of am, but I was the weirdo for years, you know? Facts. Facts. And it wasn't until, you know, my uh, family's friends started asking them to ask me for advice and on things that it was okay for them to ask me for advice or, or, you know, it it just kind of developed where people started to trust me because I was experimenting on myself. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly asking other people for, Oh, how do you do this? And how do you do that? You're learning what they've learned. You're not learning what you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, yeah, I was blessed to be forced to solve it myself. That's all I always grown up experts i'm 19 like this is your answer for life Mm -hmm. what you went to school for all that time this is your answer it's like it's frustrating it's not gonna work (laughs) and i see this with people all the time in in my you know practice uh, here with heal your disease yeah talking to clients who you know, have, are at death's door and doctors are, are telling them to get ready and make preparations with your family that you're done. You know, you're, you, this organ's dead. Freaks you're gonna me die. out. And year, year and a half later, they're all better, right? They're fine. They're living a happy life and, and they've gotten off all the medications and away from the drugs and stuff. And so it's, it's phenomenal to think that doctors can't, make that connection with all that education with all this so research busy. all these things i think that's what it is and so busy. and the their main source of information is coming from a select group right this is what i my, my main issue and i, I was going to bring this up because i yeah. thought we would be debating a little more than agreeing more <laughs> but it doesn't matter what you believe there yeah. is lots of research to back that up on the internet now facts Right, there's a rabbit hole for everyone, and and it's it's so just absolutely difficult to have a conversation with about anything with anybody anymore. I I was gonna (laughs) tell you, I'm like, there's probably people out there that believe the only way to really thrive is eating alien meat or something, right? Like, or who knows what it is, right? Yeah, no, it's crazy. You say that, and that's not weird enough. Like, there's weirder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, So it's weird. So yeah, I feel the same way, and I and but it's like eventually you're just like. Yeah, I don't have to explain myself to them. Mm-hmm. And they'll never understand anyways. And they are trying to make me be like them. They're not healthy. I don't care what they have to say. Exactly. You know? And yeah. it's, it's just like, you know, all these people, like, it's like all these people making decisions about what drugs or what foods are okay to eat and like mm-hmm. all these things. Like, let's see what they look like. 
let's put them through a, a physical examination. Let's see how they hold up. It's mm-hmm. like, should they be making these choices? Mm-hmm. Probably not. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, should a dude that like, I mean, it's just like, you got lawyers that spend their time indoors deciding what those of us should do that aren't lawyers. Mm-hmm. Like, they, shouldn't they just decide for lawyers? Or at least, if they're going to decide for anyone, people are living lives like them. Mm-hmm. They're not, how are they suited to know what I need? Yeah, and it's, it's <laughs> difficult to say what, like, the real solution is for all this, right? Because yeah. I, I, a lot of times I will point at, you know, the corporate system or the capitalist system or whatever. It's like, until you take the money out of help, mm-hmm. or you take the money out of a lot of these processes, you're not going to get real results because it's not focused on taking care of people, it's focused on making money and, and getting perpetual above, getting over funds. people. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and they don't even know, like, it's tough. Like, they're just... It's just the whole model was based on specialization to, like, such an extreme level. But, like... So, I, I don't think we have to do anything. I think everything's solving itself on its own. I, I, I feel like... It's taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's like... It's like, if you don't take personal responsibility for learning this stuff, you will kill yourself. Yeah. Straight up. Like, you will kill yourself. You will... Your, your kids, if they don't figure it out, they'll kill themselves. It's just like... And you can't do it for them. You, you can only do it for you. And if you, and if you really want to see a change, then you have to be for real about you. You have to think about, you know... You, we all got to buy stuff from places that are less than reputable sometimes or whatever. But whenever you can, whenever you see the opportunity, vote for the, for the world you want. With your dollar, that's the only real vote. I don't care what you're voting once every four years. Like mm-hmm. those people were selected by those little votes every day, mm-hmm. you know. And until we take responsibility for that, and I think the technology is allow is allowing us to do that now. So yeah. we just have to let each other know, like, yo, this is our power. Not, not in waiting for them to change regulation. That's done. That ship sailed. That's so slow. We mm-hmm. can do so many things socially way before they can even know what's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, they don't even know about the internet still. They're still trying to understand how to like influence it. Yeah, it's like yeah. it doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's true. I mean, they're they're in a state of of reacting, yeah. you know, and it's up to us exactly to be proactive and and in every aspect of our lives, um, but especially health. Because if you don't have health, you can't go to work and make money. You can't make logical decisions. You're angry, so that person that cuts you off in traffic ruins your whole day right you know you you can't i I tell people a lot that you know we're like a a spiritual lightning rod right like energy's moving through us right and if you're backed up and insulated you're holding on to static you're holding on to emotion you're 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 just building up Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and and until you let everything flow out be it physically or you know uh, metaphorically or both Usually it's interconnected, and we're finding out that more and more it's all interconnected. And Always, I, it's like I don't even understand yeah. how like, like, what? How could it, you've only ever been here when everything's been here? So how is not everything connected? Mm-hmm. You've never been in a here where this, where this stuff, everything wasn't here with it. It's just like weird how we could just like this idea that like a, this delusion of the Western mind, hyper focused on the on the pure reductionist uh, father paternal mm-hmm. like type of thing it's like cause that's all happening in the foreground we got this whole background going on mm-hmm. that's been going on this might it's, yeah. we don't the time is not what we think it is <laughs> Yeah, I, I I really don't think most of us really understand any of it. And, and right. after watching that whole pyramid code thing, it's like, man, we're looking at the whole like procession of time, you know, like you know, if, if these Egyptians and people that had all this lost knowledge, you know, Buddha and all these times when all this these great minds were setting the standards of, of religion and all this stuff, you know, we're we're almost at the bottom of the dark age right now, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're just starting to like get this idea that maybe we're going to move in a positive direction now. And so to think that we are on the complete opposite spectrum of what can be, you know, and, and to say we got this far possible. with not, with like intent like almost like pure self destruction, mm-hmm. that's impressive. Exactly. 
we can, we're we still could, like growing as a population somehow. Yeah, yeah. We, we might could do some shit if we get the, our act together. Yeah. I, I, and I think, so do you know about the yugas? The Vedic yugas? I mean, I've heard about it. I don't know much about it now. So there's just like, I mean, it's just the idea that it's, you see in many cultures about the cyclical pattern of consciousness and time. Mm-hmm. And how it goes from periods of like... Um, Enlightenment to ignorance, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so, it's just a spectrum, and we ride that wave, and that's how culture evolves and develops a background of the jungle, I guess, or something like that. But they say right now we're at the end of Kali Yuga, and Kali is the dark age, Mm -hmm. the covering, the dark womb of the mother, Hmm. from which right after follows the golden age Mm -hmm. because it's almost like you don't know where the light is until you find where the dark is right yeah i tell people that a lot it's like you know like god is everything it's the whole big picture right and if you're moving towards the darkness you're still gonna you're gonna get to a point where it's just pure dark and then you have to come back to the light right? right like it's 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 all i mean and if you're moving towards darkness you're wasting your time like you, you gotta Ish. like move. You gotta do what I you mean, gotta unless do. Unless that's your 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 chosen path, right? Like yeah. that's that's what you need to learn your lesson. But right. I I don't think that that's what people need to learn their lesson most of the time. Mm. I think people are contracted on a subconscious level to be the enemy, so the rest of us can learn, right? I think we all collectively are one, and we're saying, all right, you're gonna be the bad guy this time, and I'm gonna be the good guy. Like, have you seen and that? And then, uh, like, and then, and then, because you've been bad, that lets me know what good is. Right. I mean, it's like, have you seen the uh, what's that HBO cowboy western thing? You know what I'm talking about? Um, Westworld. Westworld. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're gonna be a black hat or a white hat kind of uh, thing, and you go into this thing, and I'm trying to wear a tie dye hat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out here with the remix. Right. This one. I. I mean, I honestly think like, really. I'm just, I'm just going to start telling people, like, yo, we're working on Atlantis. That's why I'm just start telling people. <laughs> we, are, we are the new Atlantis. Yeah, right? we're, we're bringing it about. Like, isn't it crazy? We're starting right now. They don't even believe us. They, they're they going to watch us and be like, man, they were so crazy. They thought that it... And it's like, all right, we'll see. You know, I, it's, <laughs> and, and I hope that we are better than Atlantis because Atlantis destroyed itself, from my understanding, right? Oh, they really? were trying to, like, well, there was... It's a little Mew, right, on opposite sides of the planet, and they were like two different types of cultures. You know, Lemuria mm. Mew, mm. And that was Pacific Ocean, Atlantis was the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. And so the Atlanteans were, I guess, sort of at war with the uh, Lemurians. And the Lemurians were more of like the peaceful, like, nature types, right? The more of a maternal kind of mm. thing. And then the Atlanteans, I think, were more paternal, controlling, and created a weapon, which then destroyed both. Whoa. Whoa, we're going deep. There's an ancient war that has been lost. Oh yeah, dude. Like I, I I'm mean, not. I'm not. Sure. What, I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm sure. It supposedly, could have there's been like what, like seven global like human, you know, populations on the planet. Like, oh, we did this seven times already. We've we've been here like yeah, like five to seven times already. Like, dumb these things over dude, and over. Dude, eight's the lucky number. Is it? That's what they say. I thought seven was. Eight is like infinity, bro. That. You know what I mean? Seems like eight's on the shit. Maybe. Or is it nine? Because nine is the highest in the numerology, right? Seven, eight, nine, though, is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I always think about that with... Um, you ever get into numerology? You gotta go? Uh, In a little bit, but I'm good right now. Like, maybe like 15 minutes. Right on. But numerology, yeah, I'm not super familiar with numerology. Um, I'm curious about it. Numbers seem to be something, something there. There really is. I mean, I don't know anything deep, but I mean, everything can be broken down between uh, one through nine, right? Like you can break your, your name down and, and wiggle, wiggle it down to just one number. And that's sort of like your astrological sign or whatever. Like that's going to actually assign you a personality and some traits. And Do you know what's crazy? What's up? Do you know Takashi 6 9 I don't. The rainbow haired, face tatted dude, rapper kid. Mm-hmm. You need to know about him. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's he's wild, dude. He's got six, six nine tattoos. He's like big six nine on his head. Like he's got the the jigsaw from Saw on his face. Like going for it. Rainbow hair. Crazy. 
but his name comes from that concept six okay. nine and it's and he's also doing some like yin yang stuff with the six and the nine concept he's like mm. he's gone pretty deep it's kind of interesting to see that this dude could be so ignorant and so popular mm-hmm. on such a subtle level like how deep is this kid like what does he know <laughs> yeah. well i i think too with um i mean you know about the chakras and things right yeah. right well there's seven main chakras well i think there's probably nine Right? Oh, there's we just forgot some? Two we don't know of yet, right? Maybe there are Sounds ethereal cool. levels, right? You know, Sounds there's good. seven scales in music that link up with the seven chakras. Maybe there's nine. You know, there's frequencies outside what we can hear. Same with colors. Seven main I colors. I think it overlaps, right? Like somewhere of it does. Sound, sound is vibration. It's all yeah. Easy, right? And so that's, so that's where it all interlinks. But if there's actually nine, maybe we're just missing a few things that help us complete the bigger puzzle and the bigger picture and put all this together. Yeah. Right? Who knows? But, yeah, dig into some numerology. You too. And, uh, hey, Richard, what's up, man? Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so this is not a drill podcast. Yeah, is, it's is, on a hiatus right now. Okay. It's just doing, uh, you know, it's... Uh, we we got I got a lot of ideas of people I want to talk to and things I want to do with that, but it's just like right now I just dropped a music video. I got a bunch of music to release, and I just want to take a time to focus on that stuff right now. Okay. Yeah. So do you have a, a YouTube page or something where people can find these things? Leo the Wizard, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Spotify. Leo the Wizard. And you're all over the place. Yeah. When do you go on tour? So I'm saying, bro, I need somebody to cut these checks. But if you know anybody, let them know. Leo the Wizards, come up next. Well, I think Nike's having some trouble right now. Maybe you could uh, work some volatile. Them. I should hit up, see, who's the, who's the opposite of Nike? Adidas? I don't know. That's too similar to Nike. Oh, I see. I right. need, well, you know what I need? I need that Vivo Barefoot sponsor. I would team up with them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Get, okay. get Put them on. I'm trying to... Why don't you just like uh, team up with say like earthing dot com, right? No shoes. I'm into it. You see my music video. I didn't wear shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well there you go. Tell them no. Let them know. You gotta let your tendrils feel the mother. Or you forget, forget who you are, why you came here. <laughs> it's right amazing. Well, I um, appreciate you coming over, Leo. And, yeah, sorry uh, about the mix-up. I'm glad we got to sit down and chat. This was fun. I yeah, feel like absolutely. this will be cool for people to see. And so. Yeah, absolutely. So. so. All right, well, you guys know where to find all my stuff, healyourdisease.com. Uh, it's been fun. I'm going to try and do some more of these kind of things. Uh, if you guys have anything that you want me to talk about or somebody in the Indianapolis area that you would like me to interview, please put it in the comments. Shoot me an email, Derek at healyourdisease.com. Uh, be sure to check out Leo the Wizard, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Spotify, all over the place. All the things, Twitter, whatever. Send me some love. Say what's up. I love it. Alright guys, I'm off the day. The is crowing, it's time for you to go. I can hear a freight train whistling. Left you with the jug of wine in the Louisville strip.